Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd do a painting that has a fantastic mountain in it. I get a lot of letters saying, show me how to do a big mountain with snow on it. So I'm going to show you a mountain that takes up most of this painting. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done today. Have my standard old double prime pre-stretched canvas, and I'm using an 18 by 24 inch, but you use whatever size is convenient. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So it's all wet and slick and ready to go, and let's just have a good time. Let's start today, we'll use a little thalo blue. I like thalo blue. It's a very pretty warm blue. A Little bit on the two inch brush. And we just go right up in here and just making little crisscross strokes, little X's, something about like that. There. Maybe we'll put a little cloud in the sky too, so I'll just leave a little area sort of open. There we go. If we're gonna put a huge mountain in here, we don't need a lot of sky. Let's just, tell you what, let's do a big one right there like that, something like that, whatever. There. Maybe in our world, maybe underneath there, we might even have a little water down at the base, just depending on how much time we have left. If we have enough time, we'll put it. But I want to devote most of the time today to working on a huge, huge mountain. Now, while I have this brush going, I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to the corners just to darken it. Just in the corners. Just in the corners. There. Just Prussian blue. It's much, much darker than the phthalo blue. It's very strong. And a little bit down here, too. If you put a little blue in the corner so that's darker than the rest of it, when the painting's done, it'll sort of make your eye go toward the center. That's all. Okay, very lightly we'll go across. Now then, that's about all we need. Now, the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brush. So let's do that. We scrub the brush in odorless paint thinner, shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part. That's the fun part. Let's go into titanium white. Just take the old two inch brush and tap it. Just tap it right into some titanium white. Let's make a cloud now. Go up here, take the brush, decide where your cloud lives in your world. It's the easiest way I know of making a big effective cloud. Just tap in a basic shape. Maybe it comes right on around, I don't know. A little more color. We don't care. Maybe it just sort of floats out like that. I don't really know. You decide in your world where the big old cloud lives. But that's easy enough right there. And then very lightly, very lightly, just barely touching the canvas, just sort of blend it a little bit. Just enough to take out the little tap marks. And that easy, that easy. You have a, a nice little cloud that just lives up here in your sky. There. No use making a lot of work out of it. There's another, another little indication right there. If you're going to do more than one layer, do the back layer first and then work forward. I just want a little hint. Okay. Now then, let's wash the brush one more time. Then we'll be ready to make our big mountain. Hit the bucket. There. All right. Today we're going to have our bravery test right in the beginning of the painting. So here goes. Midnight Black. Cut us off a little roll of paint. It lives right on the edge of the knife there. Let's go up here and make our first major decision. And jump right in. I think there's a big rock. It lives right there. Just put in a basic, basic shape. That's all we're looking for at this point. Just using black. You can put a little Prussian blue with it if you wanted to, but I'm just using basically black. Maybe, why not? Right about there. We'll just have another big rock. There we are. Something like so. And <laughs> as I say, this is your bravery test. Maybe, yeah. Maybe another rock over here. I bet you're saying, Bob, you've, you've done it this time. The mine has finally gone. You may be right, too. <laughs> you may be right. There. I've been told that before. Let's use a little white Prussian blue. 
on a good strong blue. Once again, a little bit of paint lives right on the edge of the knife. Just barely touching the canvas. I just want to put the indication here and there of a few little shadows that live up in here. There. Don't want a lot of detail in that. A little bit right over in here. Something about like that. Just put a few little shadows. I want to keep this very dark though. Very dark. Maybe. Shoot, yeah, why not right there? No pressure. Just let the knife touch. Just barely, barely touch. All right. Fun time. Two inch brush. Two inch brush. Let's go right through the titanium white. Load a lot of color into the bristles. A lot of paint. Just fill it up. And by wiggling it, I want to bring it to a nice sharp edge. By wiggling it and pulling it, it'll bring the paint toward the end of the bristles and that'll happen automatically. All right. Now, maybe in our world, there's a nice, maybe this is a big glacier that lives up here. There we go. Just pull it right through like that. Decide where all these little things live and begin dropping them in. Just begin dropping them in. Don't be afraid of it. There. Maybe in our world, maybe, shoot, yes, comes right over like that. There. We'll come back and smooth that out a little bit in a minute, but right now we're just putting in some basic color. Now let me clean off a little spot to work. You'd think with a palette this big I wouldn't run out of space. I'm going to take white, a little bit of black, mix it together. I'm going to make a grayish color. So just titanium white, a little midnight black. Something about like that. Don't have to overmix it. Clean off the old knife. Let's go right through that grayish color. We'll use the same old brush. I want a shadow side to this mountain, so I'm going to use this gray color to do the shadow. And our shadow lives, starts right there, comes down, see there? Like that, that's all there is to it. Now, we'll just apply a little of that gray color to make our shadow side. And this angle right here is very important. It's your good friend, it's your real good friend, take care of it. There. Maybe somewhere in here. We don't know yet. We'll decide all this later. Right now we're just blocking in a little color. About like that. Back to my pure titanium white. There. Look at that. <clears throat> See how that just looks like a sheer drop? That easy. That easy. But I want this angle right here to indicate that it's bending toward me. Okay, back to black. Maybe, yep, right in here. Maybe there is a big rock, big old rock right in here. Maybe this big old rock is, I don't know. You decide where your big old things live in here. Let your imagination take you wherever you wanna be wherever you want to be. Maybe this comes down. There. Just let it go. I don't, I don't know exactly where we're going with this. I don't know that it matters because anything that happens here is wonderful. We can work with it. We can work with it. There's a big old rock that lives right out here. About like that. Maybe, maybe there's even a big rock protruding right out of the side of this big thing here. Because we know there's rocks underneath there. We know they're underneath there. Maybe over in here there's a little something. Wherever. I'm going to grab the small knife. I can get into these little places here. I just want to sort of blend that edge out. Just sort of blend it out. And follow the angles that you put in here. Most important, just wiping the knife off. Just wiping the knife off. There. That's all there.
is to it. But you can put all kinds of big old things hanging off the side there. Maybe you can see some little things up in here. Wherever, wherever, there, a little bit of the white. I'm still using the small knife here. I want to just sort of bring this together a little better. When you're at home doing this and have unlimited time, you can really smooth this out and make it gorgeous. Make it gorgeous. Some little things all up in here. Now I'm gonna get the little blender brush. It's very soft. You can blend right over the top of this. And just very gently bring this together, make it smooth as silk. There. Like that. Back to my Prussian blue. We'll put a few little shadows on here. Just a few little guys. Live right in there. Gotta have a shadow on this big old rock. There, you decide. Once again, painting is such an individual thing and each person sees nature through different eyes and how you see it is the way it should be painted. See, just by changing the angles here a little bit, we can come back in here and make us look like there's a little snow laying right up in here. Just sort of a little recessed area right in there. Sneaky. Now back to our two inch brush and bring some snow right out of here. I'm intentionally picking up some of that dark color so it'll make shadows in there. So I want that snow to look like it's just coming up here and laying right up on the top. And maybe it comes right up like that. But put another little rock right here. And see, that'll help push that back. Just play back and forth with rocks and stones and angles and all these things will happen for you. A little practice and you'll be shocked at what you can do. Now then, maybe, yep, comes right down. Like that. Right over the side. Right over the side, just like a waterfall sort of, only this is snow. Just let it fall right down through there. There, just sort of blend all that together. I'll grab the little blender brush and smooth it out real smooth. There, see? A little blender brush just smooths things. There we are. Now, right along this edge here, I want to separate it, so I'm going to use pure white there. I want it to separate. It's important that we have that bright white area so it separates those two. There. Little edge is all we're worried about. Okay. Now, maybe, maybe in our world. There we go. <laughs> Another stone. Just put these wherever you think they should be. I like to move mountains sometime where you can see these big rocks projecting out under the snow. It looks like a big glacier. Big old glacier. I lived in Alaska for a dozen years. And there's some of the most gorgeous glaciers there that you've ever seen. Absolutely fantastic. There's no doubt in my mind God was having a good day when he made Alaska. So beautiful. There. All right. A little bit of snow right in there. And we just blend that down. That's all there is to it. That's one wild mountain, isn't it? Mm. And you can do it. You can do this one. Take your time when you're at home. Look at the angles. Study it. Put it together. It'll work for you. Okay. I think we got a pretty nice old mountain there for such a short period of time. We're going to live with it just that way. Create a little mist right here at the base. And off we go. Now, we need some background things happening in there. So let's make some big decisions. What do we want? We'll take some black, some Prussian blue. <laughs> Even put a little lizard and crimson in it, maybe a little brown. Looking for 
sort of a bluish gray color. That's getting pretty nice right there. Right there. Get a little white here. I want a couple different values of it or strengths of it. One a little darker than the other, so I just add white to some. There we go. A little more of that crimson in there. A little more of the brown. All right, now we got a couple of values. Okay, we'll wipe the old knife off. Let's grab a, a fan brush. And we'll go right into some of this color. About like that. This is sort of a blue-gray. Load a lot of color in there. Let's go right up in here. Now maybe in our world there lives some nice little trees way back here in the background. Just gonna tap downward with these. Just tap downward. Like so. There. And we'll just let these wander right on Wherever, we don't know where they're going. Wherever they want to live. But by making these trees fairly small, it makes the mountain look bigger. There we are. It's all relative to the size. Now then, clean two inch brush and I'm gonna tap the base of it firmly. I wanna create more mist down at the bottom firmly and then gently, gently lift upward. See, it takes out all the little tap marks and makes it look like little trees that live far, far back in the distance. Far away, far, far away. That's why everybody wants to hear me sing is far away, <laughs> real far. There, okay, I'm making the same color, only a little darker. And in my world, I think, yep, Maybe there's another little group of trees that live. Maybe there's, I know, I know, I got it. Maybe there's a steep little thing right here. Something about like that and get a little more color on the brush. There. Maybe it comes down. We don't know where it goes here. It just sort of wanders off. Just wanders off. There. Right on down. We'll have it go up like that too. There, just all kinds of little things. We said we was gonna make a big mountain today. We weren't kidding, were we? Now, this is one monster mountain. I'm gonna tap the base of this. Once again, I just wanna create that illusion of mist and then lift upward Whew, very lightly, very lightly, very lightly. Very, very lightly. One here and some air. And you can show different layers of trees just by changing the flavor or the color a little bit. Just by changing that color. There we go, wherever you want. But do one little layer at a time. And then take your brush, tap the base, and blend it again. See there? going to end up being reflections, I think. I just decided I want, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let me find, there it is. I got a small number three fan brush. I'm going to dip it into a little bit of liquid white, go through titanium white. The liquid white's in there strictly to make this a little thinner, so it'll slide over the thicker paint without mixing. Let's go up here. Watch, right here in my world lives a little waterfall. Do you see it? Go across, down. Little waterfall. That's all there is to it. There's some trees on this side of it. Just to give an indication that back there is a little waterfall. Far away. Far away. Okay, we can take our little blender brush. It's so soft, so soft. And just tap in the indication of a little mist there. That's about all we need. Pull that straight down. Create a little bit of reflection. Shoot, a little touch of the liquid white. Go across. 
I don't want a lot of water line here. Maybe just the indication that something's happening back in here. Like that. All right, let's clean this off a spot to work. Time to have some fun here. Take some black, Prussian blue, sap green. Throw some crimson and brown in there too. Both browns, what the heck, we don't care. Good dark color. Fan brush. I'm gonna load it full of that dark color. A lot of paint in it. And in our world, maybe there lives right up through that dark, a big evergreen tree. There he is. Now if you have trouble making him stick, add a little paint thinner. A little paint thinner to your brush when you go through the paint. Once again, thin paint will stick to a thick paint. There we go. Maybe in here. Tell you what, let's have a bunch of them. We got a couple minutes left here. We'll just put in a whole little forest. There. Put in some little shapes. Here and there, the indication of some individual trees. Those are far away. There. A little closer to us, they're a little bigger, a little more distinct. There we are. All right. I like to paint trees. We'll do one more. One more. Like that. We'll take that same brush, go right through the yellows, cad yellow, yellow ochre, and that'll make green just by going through it. There, see? Just load it up. Go back up here. Take a little bit of that green, and we'll highlight our little trees. There they are. Just some highlights living out here. There. Maybe even back here, just an indication of a few little things that live in there. And we'll take a old big brush. Maybe we'll turn this into a little peninsula. It lives right out like that. That's all there is to it. Let's tap in a little bit of color. I want to pull some of that down so it'll reflect right into the water. There. And go across. That easy. Same old brush. I'll go through some of the yellows. There. And we'll just put an indication of a little grassy area it lives right up in here. About like that. Little Indian yellow. Once in a while, a little touch of the bright red. Not much bright red. Just a little. Just a little. Little things back in here. Let's take, I'm going to use, take a little black, a little bit of brown mixed together. And I'm going to put the paint thinner with it to thin it down. I want to thin it very thin. Very thin. There we go. Take our filbert, go right through that dark color. And the other side will go through white with a little bit of brown in it, a little, little bit of the dark sienna. So we have dark on one side, light on the other. And let's go right up in here and make some little stones that live up in there. There, wherever you think they should live. Right in here. Maybe there's even some out in here. I don't know. You just put them wherever you want them. But you can make a, the entire stone in just one stroke this way. There we go. Take a little bit of the liquid white. Put us in a little water line around these. Something like so. Don't want a lot of water line. Just a little. Just sort of bring it together. I'm going to put in one little bushy up here, and I'm going to call this one done. But I'm going to take a little green on the one-inch brush. I know there's a little bush lives right here. Happy little bush. Nah, there's two. You're right. About like that. I think with that, if we had a little red, we could sign this rascal call him done. We'll sign him right here. Hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It'll give you a challenge. It's a lot of fun. Let me know how you do with it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.